Let's take a look at a very common solar powered rotator. It's basically a device that you can put in a shop window display or on your windowsill and it will rotate its platform. In this case, it's got this massive uh, fake diamond on it from AliExpress. But uh, as supplied, these come in a box and they have a little cap over this in here. Now, this is important because in the early days, because these have been around a long time, I can remember ordering one and it came with it pre-attached and in shipping it had basically just smashed the whole mechanism inside. So that's why they ship it like this now and it uh, just allows it to get to you intact. But anyway, let's take a look inside it. Noting for a start that these are available in a few colours uh, and it's got one, two, three, four solar panels on the side and I think there are four sections, so probably about two volts. Let's get a screwdriver and whip these screws out the bottom of this. These things can also be quite annoying because they make a bit of a, a slight rumble as they rotate, although the motor inside isn't a conventional motor. It is an electronically commutated motor. And uh, they're so sensitive to the slightest hint of light that they will start rotating even when you're sticking in cupboards and things like that. So you generally have to yeah, put them in a place that gets no light if you want some uh, peace from the noise. Not that they're super loud. Other things worth mentioning, it's not directional. It can rotate clockwise or clock anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. And uh, ultimately, you can just stop it and turn the turn table, if you wish, just to change the direction. So when we open it up, we find something that resembles a clock mechanism inside. And all those solar panels are just connected in parallel to this mechanism. Okay, so let's go in into here. Let's zoom down a bit. So just like the clock mechanisms, and this is where it all pings to bits, just like the clock mechanisms, it's held together by these little spring-loaded catches. Yeah, that's now a pile of uh, wheels. Right, so here's the motor, which the rotor of the motor, which is a, a metal disc with four little neodymium magnets, I'd guess. Let's test them and see how strong they are. Oh yes, they're neodymium. And they are floating above a coil here, and they're attached to this uh, gear train that ultimately leads to the output, with this one being the, the output wheel. Right, so let's lift this circuit board up. If we can lift this circuit board up, what holds it in place? Oh, nothing holds it in place. The circuit board is out. Okay, well, you know what happens now. I shall take a picture and reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Okay, well, this circuitry is actually quite clever. It's an A-stable multivibrator with uh, opposing calls, effectively, so it basically toggles backwards and forwards the polarity on that magnet. Now, let me zoom in just a little bit more. So here is the coil, and it's coming up to these three connections. The centre tap is going positive, and uh, it looks as though it's been sort of wound starting at this pin, going to the centre tap, and then over to this end. So the effect of the polarity of the coils, as they're pulsed negative by these transistors, effectively reverses the polarity of the coil. So by the look of it, uh, the it's not really sensing feedbacks as such, it's just alternating, and we can test this. I've got a little magnetic tester, which may actually pick that up. Not sure how fast it's doing it, though. So there's a capacitor here that uh, acts as a reservoir, 470 microfarad, 10 volt, for the input from the solar panel or these possibly battery connections. There are the uh, bias resistors that are also part of the timing, uh, some timing capacitors, the two transistors, which are fairly standard NPN transistors, and then one extra little capacitor, which may be to help start it or to give some stability. But you can see that in the schematic. Incidentally... Uh, you can change the gearing in this because I accidentally missed out a gear and still managed to make it work and it went much faster and then I realised there was a gear missing and popped it in and it does look like it's an option so let me bring in the schematic this will be instantly familiar to those who have uh, dabbled with the little two transistor oscillator that's normally used to flash if you replace these coils with a uh, an LED and resistor, the LEDs would alternate backwards and forwards. 
So there's the solar panels. There's the little buffer reservoir capacitor. Um, these are the coils, sender tapped to the positive. So I'm guessing that the winding is such that the polarity is opposite. And there are the little resistors that are going down to the bases to bias and also provide part of the timing. The transistors are just standard. They're marked CR, which means C945, or 2S C945 to give them their full name. They just seem to be standard NPN transistors, which is common for this type of circuit. And this is where it gets very difficult to describe the operation because it's continually changing all the time. But suffice to say that when this transistor starts turning on for reasons and it induces a uh, current flow in this coil, it will effectively, because this end is pulling negative, the end of the dot is positive, and it will be echoed in this one, and the positive here will then couple via this capacitor and turn that transistor on fully, and it will turn on until it reaches a saturation point that it can't really do turn on anymore because of this capacitor. I measured them in circuit as 7 microfarads, so the closest is 6.8 microfarad. I measured that one at a roughly 220 nanofarad, but this was in circuit again. But then once the field starts collapsing, it does the opposite. Uh, it effectively takes the drive away from this transistor and starts uh, coupling it. But because this transistor now turns on, it starts coupling it via this coil and uh, once, so once it's started, and that might be where that capacitor's for, it just basically starts toggling backwards and forwards at high speed. Okay, let's do some experiments. Let's open this up, and I'll show you the little thing whirling around inside. And I'll also show you, this is where it all pops apart again. It will completely just pop into millions of cockwheels. It does that. It's like a little puzzle. You get to work out where they go back again. There's a little uh, rotor spinning around. Note it's not over the centre of the coils. Well, let me zoom down this. And there's the first stage gearing, and there's the second. Now, you can remove this cog wheel and move this one closer to that one, and then this one steps in, and it actually starts... Uh, running on that, I think. Yes, that is right, I think. But let me uh, pull this out and show you with the magnet tester. If I hold the button in, the magnet tester has two polarities, north and south. So this magnet is south, but the next one is north and then south and then north. So the magnets are alternating polarity. And if I put it next to this coil now, is it going to be alternating notably? It's not picking it up. The reason it's not picking it up is... Now, I wonder, does it need... Does it need the magnets to be spinning to actually inter interfere that? Does it oscillate on its own? Or is it just the fact that this... Uh, this tester has probably got a slight delay to avoid interference? I'm not really sure, because I think that'll be running at fairly high frequency. So let me just uh, shuffle that cogwheel... I've forgotten where that one went. Oh, right, okay. So this one comes out. Oh, that is the main cogwheel. So this one could go in. Watch we screw this up. There. And then this one could go straight in there. So in this instance, see these two holes here. It, this is the normal one where you've got that extra wheel. But if you move it in there, it does seem to bypass that. And if I pop this in now, if I can get it in, because uh, it is a bit fumbly. And then I clip the thing back together. It was rotating roughly one revolution every 10 seconds before. This should theoretically all line up as I clip it together. Oh, and now let's uh, let it run up to speed. Well, I'll put something on it so you can see. Oh, that's going to fly right off, isn't it? Yeah, that is a lot faster. That's one revolution every two seconds? Almost every second. No, but I'd say one revolution every two seconds. Okay, so you can do that. Can uh, any enhancements in that? Can we go any faster? But anyway, that is it. It's a nice 
interesting little thing. It's quite nice, having a little turntable. You can put little fake diamonds. This might actually be a bit too heavy for it for long-term use, but uh, the plastic crystals could be put in it. Bits of mirror could be put in it if you wanted, or just your ornaments at the window to rotate slowly and give it a nice ambience when the sun shines so it's quite a nice little thing i do like these little solar powered turntables and they're very affordable